That's great to be back. Ready? <clears throat> uh, thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon, and I apologize for the construction going on next door. Um, just trying to make some much needed repairs to the state capitol. Uh, we had a very productive trip to Korea and Japan. Um, as you may know, and we had announced when we left, uh, the trip to Korea was at the invitation of the uh, general counsel here and the Korean government. Uh, really focused on expansion of um, business, government, educational, and cultural exchanges uh, between our, um, the nation of Korea and, um, and Hawaii, um, as is the case with many of uh, those in Asia. Um, the relationship between Hawaii and uh, Korea and Hawaii and Japan are, are very important to our communities. Most importantly, um, Hawaii has a special relationship with these nations. Um, <clears throat> we had uh, spent much of the time in Korea talking uh, about um, a number of items. 100% renewable in 2045 goal is, is certainly uh, something that uh, the, the many in Korea and Japan are very aware of and they are very interested uh, in uh, being part of. Uh, we did have the opportunity to um, talk about uh, ways that we could collaborate in achieving those goals and roles that uh, the government, as well as the private sector in, in Korea, can participate in uh, our efforts to be 100% renewable. Uh, <clears throat> travel and hospitality is our number one industry, and, and some of our time there was focused on that. Uh, as you all are aware, Jin Air uh, will be starting service to Hawaii. Uh, in December, which increases the number of seats. I think most importantly, it, it does allow us to get more visitors uh, for, from Korea uh, to Hawaii, and there's lots of excitement in Jinair starting service uh, to Hawaii. Uh, they'll be adding uh, one flight five days a week, which a significant increase in the number of visitors that we can uh, receive from Korea. Um, I also had the opportunity and presented a wreath at the War Memorial in Korea. Uh, once again, Hawaii was overrepresented um, in the armed services uh, that participated uh, to defend Korea during the Korean War. Uh, and I can tell you that government and um, um, business leaders are very much aware of Hawaii's participation and sacrifice uh, in the war to protect uh, their independence. Um, also had the opportunity to meet with Seoul National University. So Seoul National University is the Harvard and MIT of Korea. Uh, very good conversations. They are interested in faculty exchanges, uh, student exchanges, as well as the opportunity. Um, they uh, have been very active in the past with uh, training of their leadership uh, in Hawaii and um, seek to expand or renew uh, some of those proposals uh, so that they can um, engage and work with Hawaii. They do see uh, the globalization of our communities and they do see a significant value in sending their uh, faculty and students abroad. And Hawaii, obviously, uh, is, is an obvious choice to expand that. Um, we also had the opportunity to uh, visit and tour the Korea Institute for Energy Technology Evaluation and Planning. Uh, they, again, are looking at how they can uh, transition their economies to clean energy. They are very much aware of the 100% uh, renewable goal that we have set for ourselves uh, and they want to participate uh, on the research and development side as well as uh, helping to solve uh, the, the energy storage challenges uh, that we need to uh, respond to in order to get to 100%. Um, 
we visited the Siwa Tidal Power Plant, which uh, is an interesting uh, project where they are generating uh, energy from the change in tides. Um, significant opportunity in Korea. And although our tidal shifts are not um, as far ranging as, as it was in Korea, uh, this could be another potential uh, for uh, with application here in Hawaii. Um, moving on to Japan, um, I had participated in the US Japan, um, Japan uh, Council um, conference in the early part of the week, uh, opportunity to meet with a, a number of uh, leaders in Japan. Uh, as part of that, I participated in a conference with um, a conference session with five other governors of provinces uh, in Japan to talk about um, expanding uh, educational, economic, and cultural exchanges uh, between our communities. Um, again, I think as governors, we realize that uh, many of the challenges that face our countries um, can be improved by relationships at the sub-regional level. Uh, and they recognize that our abilities uh, as governors to work together uh, can greatly enhance the relationship between um, the country of Japan and the United States. Um, again, we were able to talk about, and I met with All Nippon Airlines, ANA, uh, and they uh, will be increasing flights to Hawaii. Uh, it was a very uh, good discussion. Um, they are committed to the Hawaii market uh, they will be uh, adding flights, um, significantly actually increasing access to Hawaii. They really do view Hawaii as a special uh, resort des um, destination uh, in their portfolio of, uh, of routes and uh, have committed that Hawaii will continue to be and will be expanded uh, in terms of uh, the seat, their airlift and seats that bring our guests from Japan. Uh, also had the opportunity to meet with J League, the Japan Professional Soccer Association. They're very interested in um, activities uh, with Hawaii. They view um, Hawaii as the perfect location for um, exhibition matches between um, the U.S. Professional Soccer League and uh, the J Japan Soccer League. Um, so they really do see an opportunity for Hawaii in an expanded role for uh, exhibition matches. And I think most importantly, they do view it as a um, sports development opportunity. They want to be able to engage uh, all level of uh, soccer players here in Hawaii. Uh, they are aware and they would like to see um, enhanced activities between the youth soccer programs in Hawaii. Uh, and the uh, youth soccer programs in Japan uh, leading up to um, interaction at the professional level. Um, <clears throat> also had the opportunity to meet with the uh, Japan-Hawaii Parliamentary uh, Friendship League. You know, Hawaii is the only state in the country that has a relationship uh, with members of the diet in Japan. They recognize that the whole uh, U.S.-Japan relationship is most important uh, and they do view Hawaii uh, as different than any other state. We have a friendship league with both the upper house and the lower house in the uh, Japanese parliament. Uh, and I did have a follow-up meeting uh, with both of those organizations to talk again about how uh, we can help uh, our countries be more successful in building a strong partnership and relationship moving forward. Um, I think that that's all that I had in terms of my uh, the things that I wanted to talk about. I know that I've been um, away for a bit, and there might be some issues that you might want to ask about. So, open to questions. Governor, to touch on the renewable energy initiatives that you discussed in Korea, um, we've been working on a series called Priced Out of Paradise, where we've been talking with different local economists about some of the things that are driving up the high cost of living in Hawaii, which comes as no surprise, of course, to anyone. And they talk about 
housing costs, of mm -hmm. course, being number one, and number two being um, our electricity rates. Yes. One of the conversations that they had as it applies to electricity and renewable energy is that perhaps the state's drive to go green, these efforts to try to get renewable energy initiatives underway, they have ignored attempts to, in the meantime, bring down our kilowatt per hour price. And one of the things they said could do that is natural gas. Can you talk about this administration's viewpoint on that? Yes, and, I, uh, and I've said uh, before that uh, in terms of electricity production, I do believe that uh, moving to um, uh, LNG would be a distraction that we are looking and seeking um, regulatory flexibility from the federal government so that we don't have to make uh, investments in our electricity um, infrastructure to accommodate a trans transition fuel that uh, would be phased out over time. Uh, so yes, I am aware. Um, the flip side of that, for the first time, uh, we are getting proposals back for renewable energy sources that are pricing below the cost of generating um, electricity from oil. Uh, so I do believe that we can pursue the 100% renewable uh, and bring down the uh, electric utility costs at the same time. The flip side to that, of course, is rising housing costs. And we live in a state where um, it has been clear that we lack the necessary housing units. I know HUD released a report saying that an additional 66,000 housing units are needed by 2025. There clearly is a lack in affordable housing, as we've seen as a result of the increase in our homeless population. Yeah. But there's also been a lack in workforce housing as well. What are some of the solutions that the state, your administration, is looking at to address this growing need? I do believe that we need to be focused on uh, housing at all price points. Uh, and so clearly, we've initiated and we've actually approved uh, several um, um, affordable housing or affordable rental um, programs out of the whole, um, Hawaii Housing uh, Finance and Development Corporation. Uh, we have uh, approved several of those projects. Uh, we are focused on public housing uh, and making uh, public housing uh, more available. Uh, as you may be aware, we have a pilot with um, UPW for a multi-skilled workforce that allows us to uh, improve uh, the, the units that are in the existing housing stock and get them up uh, to standard so that we can uh, get them back in the housing market. Uh, and again, we will be looking at initiatives uh, in the next session to expand uh, access to both rental assistance uh, as well as looking at policies. You know, we are looking along the transit route. Uh, we have uh, been we had requested and been authorized by the legislature to have a planning, a planner assigned that would be looking at transit-oriented development uh, along the transit line. And so we'll be looking at opportunities for state um, parcels that can be uh, afforded uh, and made available for housing specifically. Mayor uh, Caldwell just returned from D.C. and expressed some concern about the funding uh, issue and how the feds are maybe going to uh, hold back on some money unless the council uh, pushes through the uh, excise tax uh, extension. Uh, any thoughts on that? Um, well, you know, I am committed to uh, finishing uh, the rail transit project. You know, I think I, uh, I signed the bill that um, allows the council to uh, raise the tax. Um, you know, it really is in the council's hand in terms of providing and assuring sufficient resources to complete the project. Um, there's also some talk about possibly having to end it at Middle Street. Um, what do you think about that idea? Well, for the most part, transit is a, a county issue, and I think it's really uh, in the hands of the mayor and the city council at this point. Uh, uh, Segway into uh, homeless questions, we're talking about housing. Uh, we understand that HC Days having some trouble getting a vendor, uh, and that uh, it's just not as easy as people might think. Yes, I mean, we are fully aware and uh, one of the uh, lessons that we learned in the leadership team uh, as we have been meeting is that there are uh, many challenges to addressing the homelessness um, situation. 
uh, we are working on um, Kakaako and being able to um, uh, implement um, a co compassionate uh, disruption program. And we'll be making a specific announcement soon, as soon as we work through the details. For Kakaako? For Kakaako. And then uh, apparently the land board just uh, gave the okay for Dwayne Carissa to get access to land over by uh, minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, he expressed some interest in putting a homeless shelter there, a homeless village, plantation style. Um, and it is the first, uh, I guess, company, private company to kind of say that we're interested in helping out with this problem. Have you had a chance to talk to him at all? Uh, we don't have any information. I, I don't personally have any information about what their specific project, but we welcome the engagement of the private sector. We do know and we have consistently said that the homelessness challenge is something that we will all have to be committed to resolving. I'm, I'm glad that um, the private sector has taken an interest and look forward to working with them and understanding uh, more specifically what their proposal would in, involve. On that note, has the state identified, because I understand you guys have been in ongoing conversations, to find potential state lots that could be used for this purpose of transitional or emergency shelter housing? Yes, we, we are still working through that. We'll be making uh, an announcement soon. Again, we're working through the details. You know, again, as, as we had said, there are many gotchas in existing rules and regulations that will bring up challenges uh, but we're very close to being able to announce uh, specific plans uh, to move forward on state parcels is there any way you could facilitate something with the nimitz parcel um if it's feasible to put something there because my, my understanding dr scott that was not one of the parcels that, that was so, not right that was not one of the specific parcels it was actually included in part of our original survey so we had identified uh, a number of sites that we believe could um, be used for um, accommodating the homeless so like i said we don't have any specific information about what uh, Dwayne is talking about. So I think as we learn more about what he plans, uh, we'll, we'll be able to determine what assistance specifically he needs from the state. Were you anticipating that HCDA would have such difficulty getting these bids filled? I mean, when we talked about going into Kaka'ako Makai and the necessary coordination between the state, the county, federal, private businesses, and how pa'a that was, how secure that was, and then for so many of those folks to maybe not necessarily have made the choice to move into transitional shelter, but just to go across the street, so to speak, into an area where that agreement was not set, did you guys anticipate that this would be the situation? We did anticipate that we needed to establish a, a program similar to what the county does in order for us to um, keep um, state lands clear of homeless. So yes, we did anticipate um, as we work through the specific details, uh, we do identify some of these issues that we need to um, do further work on. So, you know, we're, we're pretty confident that we'll have a solution for uh, compassionate disruption in Kaka'ako in the next day or so. And as far as uh, the um, emergency powers um, to deal with the homeless crisis, is there anything that you see that you might be able to expedite? let's say, with Nimitz or any of those other sites? You know, I think the real key in that is really to identify what the interest would be. And I think as we work through the details, then, uh, you know, as I uh, told the mayors and the other partners, if we have a specific proposal that we uh, would like and we agree uh, would be helpful to deal with the situation, uh, we will identify um, additional expansion uh, as required. I think we just want to be uh, focused and specific rather than um, broad and, and generic in, in the application of emergency power. We attended a housing seminar earlier this week, um, and it was folks across the board, private business owners, policymakers, developers. And one of the things that they talked about, and it seemed to be a consensus in the room, was that overregulation government red tape may be contributing to the lack of housing, either projects getting the green light or eventually even just getting built. 
And one of the things that they mentioned is that perhaps the State Land Use Commission isn't fulfilling a necessary role by providing a second level of review and approval, and that if that was to be eliminated, more developers would be more willing to build across the board, again, as you mentioned, at all price points. Is that something that your administration has taken into consideration or even heard about? No, I don't support the elimination of the Land Use Commission. I do support ensuring that uh, state regulation and state oversight uh, can be conducted in an efficient and effective manner. So, you know, we have been um, adding resources to, for example, state historic preservation, you know, we do know that there are several uh, regulatory functions in the Department of Health that we're adding um, resources to so that we can ensure uh, that in terms of processing the state permits that we can respond in a timely manner. We are also and are engaged in several departments, Department of Transportation, Department of Health, uh, Department of Land and Natural Resources, really looking at the overall process, regulatory process, and looking at how we can um, reduce the requirements uh, and shorten the time, um, the time, timetable for regulatory uh, approval. So all of those um, are things that we have currently in process uh, to ensure that the state part of approvals can be done in an efficient and effective manner. If we were to shift gears um, to talk about TMT, an announcement came down earlier this week that their intention is at some point this month to return to the Mauna to at least allow construction workers to repair equipment that's been sitting up there now for some time. What are the ongoing discussions? Because again, the last we had spoken with you, they had said that they were not going to return to the summit unless they had assurances from the state that they could do so in an unobstructed way and in a consistent manner. Yes, we are committed to enforce the law and ensure the project's access uh, to um, Mauna Kea uh, as required to um, uh, implement. They uh, have informed us that they would like to go up, as you said, to uh, deal with uh, some of their equipment and, and um, uh, enact repairs on some of that equipment as required. And again, uh, we are committed to providing uh, uh, their safe access you know our focus is really on ensuring that there is faith, uh, safe access for everyone involved uh, current employees as well as uh, any that would be contracted to provide services on Mauna Kea uh, we have been in discussions with um, the project and we have been in discussions with law enforcement both state uh, and the big island um, to ensure that we have the personnel needed and so how does this look different than the last time they attempted seven months ago? Well, we definitely have spent a lot more time planning. We have uh, had several conversations with uh, law enforcement on the, on the Big Island, as well as uh, internal to the state. Uh, so I think as we get a um, clearer understanding of, of what they uh, would be proposing to do, uh, we will be pre better prepared to respond um, with the potential number of protesters as well as, you know, any other activity that might occur. Lack of law enforcement personnel was cited as one of the concerns the last time, and so I'd be remiss if I didn't ask the National Guard question yet again. We are committed to ensuring the personnel needed to provide safe access to all of those who need to get to Mauna Kea. Uh, and that includes those that would be involved with the uh, 30 meter telescope project. So is that a yes that you'd consider sending in the National Guard? We are committed to provide the resources necessary to assure safe access to Mauna Kea, whatever that entails. Governor, have you had any conversations with the National Guard about it? No. Nope. Okay, thank you all. Thank you. I apologize and thank you for um, putting up with our temporary construction uh, requirements.